Bridgerton gets therapized. We're back with Colin and Penelope. Whew, that hot and heavy carriage scene. I can only show so much here on YouTube. Uh, and also the love triangle when we throw Lord Debling in the mix. Ah, uh, Lord Debling. I really like the guy. Men in light. In love, it's important to balance heart and head. That's the big theme I'm seeing in Bridgerton season three so far, is you can have a smart match, you can have a heart match, and oftentimes movies and TV shows say you can't have both. Actually, you absolutely can, and, and you need to. Have that draw, have that passion, have that desire, have that connection, but also is this a, a smart match? <laughs> because the fact is, if you go for just a smart match, you may feel unsatisfied and disconnected. If you go just for a heart match or a, or a, lu or a lust match, uh, you may find, oh, later down the road, this actually was never going to work uh, because we didn't think through, do we want the same things out of life? Are we actually a good fit for each other as partners? And balancing the two of them is how you find a relationship and create a relationship that lasts. So Penelope has been coached by Colin on how to flirt, how to engage socially. And I found this supercut by YouTuber Margarita Life. I'm loving that name. I found this supercut that covers Penelope and Lord Debney very, very well. And I just realized I've been saying Debney instead of Debling. That's on me. <laughs> Let's keep going. Lord Debling has made his intention to marry this season quite clear. Good evening, Miss Featherington. Lord Debling. I think he might turn out to be the most eligible lord of the season. You enjoying the party? Immensely. And yourself? Oh, rather. But do you not think the most beautiful birds are sometimes the most common? I have bought you a plant so that you might continue to enjoy nature from your windowsill. <laughs> okay, so Lord Debling is an outdoorsman. He loves, he loves being out in nature, camping, basically the Regency era version of someone who would backpack across Europe, right? And, and he plans on, he has a large estate, he has a lot of money, he plans on being away for three years to go to the remote stretches of the world to explore, that's what he's passionate about. And he is not necessarily looking for somebody who shares that passion. What he is looking for is someone who is compatible with what he wants out of life. And, and for a time, Penelope is pretending that she's interested in the same things he is until she just straight up tells him, here's who I am. The person that I am, I'm someone who enjoys society and gossip, even if I do occasionally hide it, it's all right. I fork on eating the flesh of dead animals and they barely tolerate me for that great sin. He's also a vegetarian, uh, which more common today in Regency era is almost unheard of. It's blowing everybody's minds. Uh, <laughs> but what he, what he enjoys about Penelope is that she is, at least as he sees her, content on her own. That, that it would be a low maintenance relationship of when they see each other, it's good, and there's someone to, to tend to my estate when I'm away but she loves her books and she loves reading and she loves being by the windowsill. And he enjoys her candor and forthrightness when everybody else is wearing a mask. And he says to her, you don't have to share my passions. I don't need somebody who is like me. I just need somebody who's passionate about something and has their own views. And he's seeing her as a smart match. And he's not necessarily looking for love and romance. He's looking for a smart match. And at this point, she thinks, I'm, I'll be fortunate to have anything, so of course. Do you feel some attachment to him? It is early. I do not wish to court someone exactly like myself. You do not read Lady Whistledown? I do not. I want to be with someone who knows who they are. And of what did she write? That I enlisted an eligible male friend to help me find a husband. Is there a reason you like that window so much? I suppose I mostly just enjoy the view. You're looking for someone, Miss Featherington? Is everything all right, Miss Featherington? Everything is wonderful. And I'm very glad to be here with you. I love this, there's a moment where she says, I've been written about in the gossip rag by Lady Whistledown. And he's like, I don't read it. And she finds that refreshing, even though she writes it secretly, right? Because he's not interested in gossip. And she is, but she sees him as standing apart. And when she tells him, I, en I enlisted an eligible male friend to help me find a husband to coach me, instead of seeing it as shameful as and embarrassing as so many others did, he sees it as very practical and he sees it as her taking the initiative and he sees it as a positive. And this is what we talk about when we talk about the book Real Love by Dr. Greg Barron. He talks about finding 
real people, people who see you as you are and want you as you are and accept you as you are. He doesn't judge her by society's mores. He just sees exactly as she is. He's removed those lenses. And I love in life surrounding yourself with those types of people. Well done. For being a fool. For stepping away from the herd. How many yous are there exactly? And why do I have the feeling that you, in turn, know how to make one wither, if you so choose? We are alike in that way. Lord Debling has requested my permission to propose. A practical match, but a happy one. I like the sound of that. What more could you want? And if her mother gave her blessing, do you think she would say yes? Considering how often you travel, it makes a great deal of sense to me that you seek a practical match, but do you imagine that love may one day grow? Oh, do not tell me you're holding out for love. I think you would have to read the book. To be honest, my work has such a large portion of my heart, it may be difficult to make more space. All week I've watched you search for someone. Colin, you're going to ruin things between me and Deblin. Well, perhaps that is for the best. What do you mean? Are they not old friends? But now I suspect you may have been searching for him for a very different reason. Across the street from the Bridgerton house. And the feelings between the two of you. I can assure you, Colin Bridgerton would never, ever have feelings for me. It is laughable to think as much. We are friends. Nothing more. But would you like it to be more? Whatever it is you are searching for, I do hope you find it. Good evening. So the gist is... She says she loves to sit at the window of her house and she just enjoys the view. And once he learns that the Bridgertons are across the street, he understands the true meaning of that. And his take as a, as a practical matter is, and he says to her, I'm going to be gone for long stretches of times. It matters to me that the person I marry, their affections are not already engaged elsewhere. What he sees here, and I, I like Lord Debling because he has integrity and he has honor, and he also knows what he wants. And he, he knows that this is not a fit. Not just for him, but for her. That he wants for her what she wants for her. And that is so important. Because, you know, when the Beatles saying all you need is love, that's not, that's not true. I mean, yes, we all need love in life, but we also need trust and respect and safety and compatibility. And compatibility means, does what you want out of life and what I want out of life, does it line up or does it go well together? Does what you want out of a partnership and what I want out of a partnership, does it line up or go well together or not? And if it doesn't, that it doesn't have to be an ugly, well, whose fault is it? Or who's lesser, right? Who, who doesn't deserve who? And we throw all these judgments on it when it can just very clearly be, it's, this isn't a fit and that's okay. Of course, she's devastated right now because she had hoped to be with Lord Devling because she didn't think she had any other prospects. And she feels like Colin blew that for her when he came in and interrupted the dance and says, you can't marry him. He's not going to be good enough for you. He's not what you need out of life. And Lord Devling just pieces out. So now Penelope is brokenhearted and thinks that she will never find love. But what she doesn't know is since their first kiss, Colin can't stop thinking about her in a completely different way. Since their first kiss, Colin is realizing, I might have here what my mother and father had before my father passed away. A romance built on a foundation of friendship. And how powerful and lasting that can be. So Colin's going to make his move, and boy does he make his move. Wait! Penelope! I do not wish to speak with you. Please. Let me in. All right, I'll hear what you have to say because you're such a hunk. Seriously, what did you do in between seasons? You just... We will stop at Bridgeton House first. What do you want? Did Lord Debling propose? What business is that of yours? I need to know, did he propose? It is odd. When I asked for your help in finding a husband, I did not realize that also meant you might try to deny me one as well. It is my business, because I care about you. You cannot marry that man. He will leave you, and he is 
too particular, and he is, he is just not right for you, Ben. He did not propose. In fact, he rejected me because of you. Because the scene you caused led him to believe you had feelings for me. An idea so preposterous, I do not know what to do besides laugh. Now, will you please let us ride home in silence and leave me alone? I cannot. Please! I cannot. Because... Say it. Say it. Stand up. What if I did have feelings for you? There you go. What? <laughs> I have spent so long trying to feel less, trying to be the kind of man society expects me to be. And for a moment, I thought I had succeeded. But these past few weeks have been full of confounding feelings. Feelings like a total inability to stop thinking about you, about that kiss. Feelings like dreaming of you when I'm asleep, and in fact, preferring sleep because that is where I might find you. A feeling that is like torture, but one which I cannot, will not, do not want to give up. This is a much better version of Anakin's fireside speech to Padme. Like that, this is what, this scene is what that scene should have been. Please, do not say things you do not mean. But I do mean it. It is everything I have wanted to say to you for weeks. Call me your friends. Yes, maybe. Forgive me. Um, she took a risk. Now he's taking a risk. Thinking. I'd very much like to be more than friends. So much more. So I love like the classical renditions of pop songs on this show. They usually start playing when people start making out. Okay, I'm gonna stop this because Mended Light is a family channel and what happens here will give many of you prom night flashbacks. It is, it is intense uh, backseat carriage groping. <gasps> so, but, but what's beautiful about this is you take the risk and sometimes you lose, right? But at least you know. Because if, if it's not reciprocated, then you can hurt, you can mourn, you can grieve, you can heal, you can move on. But just pining and pining and pining just hurts you. And I love that he knows that he is a match for her in ways that Lord Debling isn't. This is a heart and a head match. They were a head match for, you know, two and a half seasons before this with their close friendship, all that they had in common, how much they enjoyed each other, how much they supported each other, how much they trusted each other. And that blossomed into something powerful. Healthy relationships are based on trust. They're based on actually knowing the person in front of you. And that takes time. And that's why oftentimes the healthiest relationships start as friendships. And even when they don't, even when they start as a romantic relationship or a sexual attraction, for it to last and to be happy, a friendship has to happen. And I cannot wait to see what happens in the second half of the season because after the gropage and the making out, <laughs> he proposes to her. Finally! What are your thoughts on this scene? Should she have gone with Debling? Are you happy that she's with Colin? Let me know in the comments below and what do you think of my thoughts uh, on, on what real love is and what it looks like. As long as we're on Bridgerton relationships, let's go back to season one with Daphne and Simon and my thoughts on that, especially because that was another intense pre-makeout conversation. <laughs> that video is going to pop up here on the screen somewhere in just a second. Until next time, folks, keep shining. We need your light.